Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a very, very highly requested video. This video is all about how to get recruited by US colleges and specifically like quite highly ranked US colleges and even Ivy League schools or any of the D1 schools, so the Division 1 schools in the US. This video is going to talk about the whole recruiting process which I now know a lot about because I have just been through it myself and in September this year I'm going to begin studying at Yale University. So that's really exciting and as you can probably tell by my accent, I'm Australian, so we have absolutely nothing like the US college recruiting system in here in Australia. Like, it just does not exist in Australia. So I, like, had to go through all of this as an international student and I, like, the stuff that I'm telling you in this video, I have figured out after I've been through the process. Like, while I was going through the recruiting process, I was going through it completely blind. I had no idea what I was doing. And now once I've come to the end, I'm looking back and I'm like, oh, this is what I should have done. This is what I should have done. Oh, I see. And I understand now that I finished it, which is not helpful for me, but it is helpful for you guys because I'm going to share all of my tips um, and advice now that I've been through the process and I'll show you exactly like how to contact colleges, how to get in touch with them and then like what to do and how to get yourself actually recruited and onto a college team in the US. So yeah, I also have my notebook of knowledge down here. So if I'm looking down, I've got all the notes that I wrote for this video down here. Um, so that's what I'm looking at if I'm looking down. Also probably worth noting, all of my subscribers already know this, but if you're a new viewer, please subscribe, number one. Um, but I am a middle distance runner. So so I do like 1,500 meters, 3,000 meters, 5,000 meters. Um, so yeah, that's my sport. Um, but this advice applies to any sports. And in this video, I'll also talk about how scholarships work um, for recruited athletes. So most recruited, like you want to get recruited for scholarships because um, otherwise you're not going to be able to afford to pay unless you're like a millionaire, all of your college tuition. So I'll talk about like scholarships and everything in this video as well because that's kind of part of the whole process. Um, Okay, so before we get started on the actual recruiting process, I've received a lot of questions from people asking like, what are the standards to be recruited? What times do you need to be running or swimming? Or how good do you need to be at hockey or whatever you're trying to get recruited for? Um, so uh, it's a bit harder for sports like hockey where there's not a specific like, like for running, I have a personal best time for each event so I can just tell the college coaches that. But for hockey, you don't really have like something like that that's like set in stone and solid that you can kind of give them um, or that you can base yourself off. But for track and field and swimming and sports like that, on the college's like website under that sport, they should have recruiting standards on there. So you can go and see like what times you need to kind of be running or what time or what distances you need to be jumping or whatever um, to have a realistic chance of being recruited by that coach and getting on that team. So they should have recruiting standards on the websites but you can get scholarships. Oh my, I'm really hot. I'm going to take my socks off. Um, but the encouraging thing is that you can get scholarships to D1 schools without being like a super, super, super high level runner to get into like the Ivy League or to Stanford or like the University of Washington or any of those like really highly ranked, really good sporty schools. You have to be pretty fast. Um, but to get like just a D1 scholarship, which is Division 1, there's lots of schools in Division 1 and you don't need to be like super, super fast. You need to be good, but not like, like absolutely amazing. So there are lots of D1 scholarship opportunities available. Um, so don't like get disheartened thinking you're not good enough. You might as well just like try all of the steps I'm going to tell you in this video and see what comes up. Um, okay, so... <laughs> I've been chatting for a while, but we're going to get onto the process now. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to do is obviously you're going to have to like have a look um, and do some research into which colleges you're interested in applying to. Um, and I will talk more about this in future videos and I'll talk more about like how to find colleges and coaches and teams that are a good fit for you. But basically, once you've decided which schools you want to apply to and have quite a few that you want to apply to, you're going to need to reach out to them. So you email them. So what you do is you go into the website for that college, um, like the sports website for that college, and they should have a staff directory um, with all of the coaches and all of the assistant coaches and their names and email addresses for every single sport. So for me, I went to women's cross country and women's distance like running and I found the coaches and the assistant coaches and their email addresses and I emailed them. My email basically said who I am and where I'm from. So I'm Tia from Perth, Western Australia. 
Um, and then it talked a little bit about my academic results because if you're interested in going to an Ivy League school specifically, they need to make sure your academics will fit in to like the college because they're like very academically rigorous. So they need to make sure your academics are up to scratch. Um, so I talked a little bit about my academic results um, and then I gave my personal best times for each of my events and then also any like really good accomplishments. So if you've won national medals um, or like I was captain of the West Australian State Cross Country Team last year, so I put that in. So any kind of recent accomplishments. And then the reasons why I wanted to attend that college in particular. So you want to have a reason why you're asking that coach to be on their team and you want to go to that college. Like you need to have a specific reason for each college. Um, and that's obviously going to vary on the school and your reasons for attending that school. Um, but you do want to talk specifically about their college and make the email look like it was tailored to them rather than like a, just a generic email that you're sending to everybody. Um, and then you want to have like a catchy last paragraph um, that makes them, I don't know, <laughs> interested in you. Um, and then at the bottom I attached like a couple of photos of me running. And if you have any video links from races that you've run or from hockey games that you've played or netball games or from swimming races or long jump or whatever your sport, if you have any videos of you competing, they really, really like to see that. Um, <laughs> I didn't actually have that many because I've never videoed my races, um, but I managed to find like a couple from Nationals on YouTube. Um, so I emailed them links to that. So, but yeah, they really like to see videos of you in action. Before we go into the next steps in the process, a big thing I need to mention is that you want to get onto this process early. I got onto this process so, like, far, far, far too late. I started emailing coaches when they would basically already confirmed all of their team and they didn't have any spots left. And this was very stressful because, like, the coaches just didn't have any spots left to give to me. They didn't have any spots left on their team. So I was like, yeah, it was stressful. So you need to get onto it really early. So I just had absolutely no idea because the Australian, like process is so different but okay so university in the US basically like starts in September um, by September the previous year the coaches have already like got their whole team organized they've already recruited all of the athletes they want to recruit like so a whole year before the university is due to start like you need to have secured your recruiting spot on that team. There are like, it's not set in stone. There's no set in stone date. I messaged coaches quite a bit after that and there were still like, uh, like one spot left on a couple of teams. But most coaches like have all of their spots filled up by about like a year before the university or the college um, academic year starts. So you really want to be getting in touch with them least by the start of that year. So if you want to apply to start college in September of 2021, you need to, to like be getting in touch with coaches from the beginning of this year, from the beginning of 2020. And if you want to do that and you haven't got in touch with them, get in touch with them right now. As soon as you've finished this video and I've given you all of the steps, um, get in touch with the coaches right now because they are like right now in the process of like finalizing their teams So yeah, it like happens really really early if you can get onto it before that get onto it like two or even three years before you're due to start at college because they get onto things early It's like a really big thing in the US and it happens very like early <laughs> I just want to emphasize that because that was the biggest mistake that I made um, and I just didn't know like I didn't know um, so there wasn't much I could do because it was I did it too late and there was nothing I could do anyway it worked out fine in the end but <laughs> that I got lucky I got very lucky okay so once you've emailed the coaches if you don't hear back from them in like a couple of weeks follow up so be persistent and follow up if they don't reply then email them again and just be like hi I'm blah 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 I just wanted to check you got by my below email and just like attach the whole email again and send it off to them again so be persistent keep following up like try it. keep following up until you get a response because um, if you keep following up you might feel like you're being annoying um, and you are being annoying if you follow up like two days after you send the email because you need to give them a reasonable amount of time to reply but if you have follow up and then if they don't reply follow up again and again because by being persistent you're actually showing that you're really interested in this college and that you're not giving up and you really want a spot um, and that is positive for the coaches to see. Um, it makes them seem like you're really interested in their school and their program and that's probably positive for them to see. So yeah, make sure you keep following up, um, especially if you really want to go to the college, like make sure you, you know, keep emailing them until you get a reply. So yeah, be persistent. Um, and then once they have emailed you back, 
Um, sometimes you're going to have like an email conversation with them. They might ask you for academic transcripts or your SAT scores or they'll ask you like some questions about like why you want to join, like any specific questions that they want to ask you over email. So you might have a little bit of an email conversation and then you want to try and organize a phone call or a FaceTime call with them, preferably a FaceTime call so that they can actually see your face. Um, but even a phone call is fine. And the reason for this is that kind of gives them more of a personal connection with you. It's also like, it's really good to talk to someone over the phone because you can express a lot more over the phone or over a video call than you can through an email and they get to know a lot more about you as a person um, and also because when you call them or like FaceTime them or video call them or whatever um, you become more than just an email you become more than just like a number they kind of see you as a person um, and that's really really important because once they start seeing you as a person and they form like a little connection with you um, it's kind of just I don't know how to explain it, but that's like really important to try and get onto a phone call or a video call with them um, and they should like if they're interested in you, they probably will like ask you to go on a call with them. Um, but if they don't ask for a call after a while, then ask them if you can have a phone call. Just say, um, I'd be happy to chat at some stage, um, blah, 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 you know, I'll fit in with you, whatever. Um, but yeah, calls are really, really important. So you want to try and get um, a recruiting kind of phone call or video call. So after you've had a phone call, and again, I don't, I don't actually really know like how, because I applied late, so my process was kind of like I guess squished and condensed and went faster than maybe other people's processes would have done if they'd applied like or if they'd messaged the coaches earlier so don't take my word as like gospel but basically I think after you've had like a recruiting phone call they might go away and then they might want to like talk to you again on the phone or they might send you more emails get you to answer more questions um, but make sure you keep following up with them um, keep following up until you either get a yes we're gonna recruit you or a no we don't have any spots for you so that might not come at this stage of the process so I'm gonna keep going through steps but yeah, make sure you're persistent until you get like a final yes or no answer. Um, so yeah, after your phone call or phone calls um, and emails, etc., um, they might ask for you to come on an official visit to the college. So an official visit is kind of a sign that they want to recruit you, which is a good sign. So if you can, try and go on the official visit. No, why is it raining? It's so loud. I'm really sorry. It's just started to rain outside. I'm so sorry at the noise. Um, but basically what an official visit is, is it's, it's a visit to the college paid for by the college. So they will pay for you um, to fly to the college and they'll pay for your food and accommodation. Normally you like stay, you stay at the college like in a dorm with like some of the other athletes on the team. Um, and then you eat on campus as well. And you're on campus, it has to be for less than like it has to be for no more than 48 hours. So it's just like two days on campus and you get to go to the training and the dining halls and sleep there and just kind of experience what college life, what college life and what the athletic life is like um, at that college. And it's all paid for by the college. So that's why it's kind of like a sign that they want to recruit you because they're not gonna pay for you to come all the way to the college and visit the college and pay for all of your expenses if they don't like actually want you to come and compete for them. Um, so it's all paid for by them, except if you live overseas, you have to pay for yourself to get to America. So once you're on the ground in America, all of your costs there will be covered. But if you live in Australia, you have to pay for return flights to America. And if you live anywhere else in the world, you'd also have to pay for return flights to America. So those are expensive and also time consuming. Like if you're in year 12, you probably don't have time to go on an official visit to a college. So that's kind of why you want to get onto it really early. So you might be able to go in your summer holidays or something because our seasons are switched to theirs. I don't know why. All <laughs> I've been like, I'm in a couple of group chats with the Yale like um, track and cross country team. And I've been trying to explain to people how our seasons are switched to theirs. And they just don't get it. They're like, no, but like Christmas and winter are at the same time. And I like, well, no, in Australia, Christmas and summer are at the same time because it's switched. And they're like, so you don't have Christmas holidays. And I'm like, well, our summer holidays and our Christmas holidays are like at the same time. And then they're like, so what's your winter holidays? And I'm like, well, it's just a boring two weeks in the middle of the year where nothing happens. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So basically, you could go on an official visit like over the Australian summer holidays um, because they would still be at school um, for most of that because they don't have as big of a break then because it's not their summer. Anyway, so that's why you want to get onto it early. That's another reason um, this whole process. 
But yeah, if you can afford them and if you have time for them, official visits are really, really good. Um, but if you can't and if you don't, then don't worry. It's not like essential. Um, I didn't go on an official visit to Yale, so yeah. And then hopefully after the official visit or at the official visit or if you don't go on an official visit via phone call um, or sometimes via email but I think it's more like something they actually want to tell you kind of in person or on call they will say that they want to recruit you hopefully or they will say that they don't want to recruit you um, either way hopefully you get a final answer um, and then once that happens they will ask you to commit to the school so if you really want to go to that school um, and you've been recruited by them they said yes that we want to have you um, then you can like commit to the school and that means you're gonna go to that school and this is the part where Ivy League schools and all of the other schools in America are different so the Ivy League is just a group of eight schools I have a video on what the Ivy League is coming out really really soon um, so yeah but they're just a group of eight schools Harvard Yale Princeton Columbia Cornell Dartmouth Brown and Penn um, so those are the Ivy League schools and then all of the other schools they differ slightly in this part um, because because with all of the other schools in America, or most of the other ones like Stanford, UW, um, University of Indiana, I don't know, like all, all different, um, literally every other school apart from Ivy League schools, um, what they do is once they have recruited you and you have committed to that school, that means you are definitely going there. So you're guaranteed a place there, you have got admission there, and they will give you a scholarship to attend there. So it could be a full scholarship, it could be a half scholarship, it could be any amount of money, um, and that's worked out between you and the coach, and that is worked out like before you commit to the school. So they tell you how much money they'll give you to attend the school, um, and then if that's good, then you commit to the school, and that means you are definitely going there to that school. With the Ivy League schools, because they are very, very hard to get into, um, the coaches can't guarantee that you'll get in. So even if they recruit you and they want you to come and you commit to that college, there is a chance that you might not get in. So they don't have as much swing in the admissions process as all of the other schools have. There is a high chance that you'll get in and you might get sent a likely letter from the school saying you are likely to be admitted, but until you actually open your admissions decision, like it's not 100% guaranteed that you'll get into that school. So at Ivy League schools, instead of giving you a scholarship and you committing to that school, you commit to the school and in return, the coach gives you a supported spot. So that means that they will like support your application through admissions and say to admissions like please admit this person, please admit this person and normally admissions says like yes we will admit this person. They still like review your application and everything but if you're like pretty good then they'll say okay we'll admit you. So it's likely that you'll get in but you still might not so you do need to have backup options um, if you've been recruited by an Ivy League school you still need to have backup options um, just in case you don't get in. And yes, you don't get scholarships at Ivy League schools. So Ivy League schools do not give athletic scholarships, but, 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 everyone, <coughs> everyone who attends an Ivy League school gets financial aid. And this can be like even more generous than a scholarship. So it's based purely on your financial situation. So you send in all of your family's financial situation and then the Ivy League school will look at your financial situation, figure out how much you're able to pay for your tuition and board and room and everything. Like all of your expenses at college are taken into account in these financial calculations. So that includes like personal expenses, holiday expenses, room, board, um, and tuition and your books, your school books and your travel um, to and from the university. So for me that was calculated my travel like to America and then to the university. So they include all of those expenses into the financial aid calculation. They figure out how much of that your family is able to pay and then they pay the rest. So they do that because when you're admitted to an Ivy League school they really want you to attend and so they will do anything that they can to help you be able to attend. So if you can't afford it they will pay the amount that you can't afford to allow you to afford it. Um, so yeah, they don't give athletic scholarships, but they do give very generous financial aid. And in most cases that makes it affordable for you. And in some cases it will be even more generous than a scholarship would have been. Um, so yeah, financial aid and scholarships are different, but they can often end up like, this is kind of with the same outcome. Like you still don't have to pay all that much money to attend college. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the difference between Ivy League schools and the other schools. The recruiting processes are quite similar, but then at the end with actually what happens and what the college gives you and how you commit, that is like slightly different. 
and I can make more videos on the differences between those two um, if you're interested and if you do have any questions like comment them down below and I can make like another video um, like a part two to this video answering more of your questions and kind of explaining things that maybe I didn't explain very well in this video. Um, if you guys want any clarification on anything then comment down below and let me know. Also worth noting, some universities will have questionnaires that they like you to fill out. So if you go onto their like website and look for your sport on their website, they might have like a questionnaire there, a recruiting questionnaire that you can fill out with your name, age, um, the year that you want to start college and all your PVs and various academic and sporting information. So make sure you fill out those questionnaires as well. And to recap, the three most important things are you need to be a good athlete um, and if you want to go to a really, really top school, you need to be a really, really top athlete. Once you email the coaches, keep following them up. Follow, 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 persist, persist, persist until you get an answer and start early. Start this process really early. If you want to start college in 2022, then now is the time to start. If you want to start college in 2021, then start like literally today. Um, if you want to start college in 2023, it's probably worth starting now as well. So yeah, um, make sure you start early. Um, I hope this video has helped you. Like I said, if you have any comments or questions, please let me know down below and give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and make sure to subscribe to my channel for so, so, so like I literally have so many more videos um, all about college application. I have lots of videos on how to apply to US colleges and stuff already up on my channel and how I got into Yale and all my stats and essays and grades and running times and stuff everything like that I already have those videos on my channel and I am going to keep filming more videos like this one explaining more aspects of the very complicated US um, admissions process for colleges um, but yeah if you have any questions let me know down below and subscribe to my channel for all of those videos and once I finally get to Yale I'm going to be filming so many university vlogs and it's going to be so good um, so yeah you want to subscribe as well so you don't miss them and go follow me on Instagram at tia.chitty. Um, I'm currently running a YouTube giveaway, so details, are, I'll link the YouTube giveaway video up here. But yeah, go enter that giveaway um, because it's a really good one. Um, and yeah, I hope this video helped you guys out. Um, my throat's really sore from talking now, so I'm gonna go. Um, but yeah, goodbye. <laughs> I never know how to end my videos. My throat is sore now from talking.